previously on Million Dollar Island. It's Hunger Games 2.0. 100 players stepped into paradise. Everyone, listen to it. And entered a game of survival. This is so much harder than I could have ever imagined it to be. In pursuit of the million dollar prize. I want to get rich. In this game, the bracelet on your wrist holds power. Corey has $130,000 on his wrist, and I want to play for money. And hunger is leverage. The more people that fall over and quit due to hunger, it's the better for us. In the arena, your bracelets are on the line. Go! But only one can win to claim them all. Corey is the winner! It's like winning a grand final. I'm looking at Jake thinking, there's a whole lot of scrambled egg all over your face, mate. At the wheel spin. Corey, that's you! With great power. Those of you wearing one bracelet, your day of reckoning is coming. Comes great responsibility. Ten of you will be selected for the next arena challenge as the island prepares for a devastating elimination. D-Day is officially here. Got a lot to think about. I'm, I'm potentially knocking out nine people. That's the biggest power play you can have. 100 players, 100 bracelets, $1 million. In this game, the target isn't on your back, it's on your wrist. This is Million Dollar Island. It's D-Day on Million Dollar Island. Oh, it's wake up. And along the beach, Top Camp, Vine Camp and Log Camp face what could be a seismic shake-up of their numbers. <sighs> Corby from Log Camp spent the night alone after winning the wheel. Oh, Dean. And must soon nominate 10 single bracelet players to compete in a do-or-die challenge. I don't know if this is going to help you make a good decision, eh? Or sway my decision, who knows? Yeah, look, it's, it's a day of reckoning. The fate of potentially 10 people rests on my shoulders. I could wipe out a whole camp if I wanted to. Oh, my God. I've got to make the right decision for me, but I also want to do this for log camp. Because we've got no food and we're starving, we've been underdogs for, for a long time. It's game on now. We've got the power. And back at Corby's home base log camp, the food supplies for his teammates hit an all-time low. Breakfast update is partially. Not a lot for 16 meals. That's all we've got. That's all the food. For the day. Yeah. I'm slightly concerned. I just tried to forage all out the back for land snails, for grasshoppers for scorpions and came up with nada. We are going out there and foraging what we can when we can, but it's just not enough. We are starving. I even looked at mud wasp nests, but they're all empty. I ate a couple of figs, but they weren't right, but I ate them anyway. We have the largest camp here at Log Camp. We have so many mouths to feed, and we are at rock bottom. I'm actually starting to get worried now, and I'm somebody that can live off nothing. While Log Camp has completely run out of food, the other two camps still have provisions. And Vine Camp has the most, much to Painter Jack's delight. Double that up, mate. You know what I reckon? Everybody, gets bored. Everybody get their food. Let's walk down to Log Camp and just all sit in front of it. <laughs> in front of it. Oh, oh, let them know. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. Flush them out. Out of curiosity, how much value do we actually have left? We've got so much. We, we, we have enough. It was Mike Tyson that said, everyone's got a plan until they get smacked in the mouth. And when the hunger pains hit, that's when everyone's getting a smack in the mouth. The way I see it, the more people fall over due to starvation, the more chance I've got of winning the game. I reckon I've put on weight since coming out here. I've never eaten so good in all my life. <laughs> it's survival of the fittest out here. That's what it is. 
you know, it's harsh but fair. I think the thing with log is they're just a bunch of useless units. <laughs> they can't catch fish, they can't delegate their tucker, they guts it all down the first four days. We're fine. Yeah. But like, we've got yeah. plenty for us. Right. We don't have to stress about that. With the fewest mouths to feed, Top Camp supplies are going strong. But with so many members owning single bracelets, half the camp could be nominated by Corey for the D-Day challenge. A fate richest man on the island, Brett, won't share. I just sleep. I think I slept. Yeah. Now, now I'm awake, I'm just kind of like, just pull that Band-Aid off, let us know who Corey's going to pick. Yeah. <sighs> I, I, I want to go in challenges, but yeah, one in ten chance is, is low odds. Yeah. D-Day's here, everyone with one bracelet's worried, and I think it's great. Nerves. Yeah. Nerves. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm not in trouble. There's no threat to me. I'm number one. I'm just sitting back, to be honest, watching all these players sweat bullets. I'm not ready to go. No one from Top Camp may be ready to leave. But Corby from Starving Log Camp has to nominate 10 players with a single bracelet. And he has decided to use his power as a bargaining tool. Hey, hey guys. How are we? Hello, Hello. What's going on, bro? Corby's my strongest friend in the game because we just get along. That's right. <laughs> hey, mate, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, good, mate. We're both PE teachers, we both play soccer, we love sport, we love everything outdoors. I'm hoping that could save me in this D-Day challenge. I didn't visualise my putting any of you guys up, to be honest. Mm. That's, you know, that's where I'm going, but I need... We need food. But when Corey arrived in camp this morning, he proposed a bit of a different spin that we were expecting. If you guys can offer us a bit of food, maybe a meal or two, none of Top Camp will go up. Can we get, like, I don't know, uh, two days' worth, potentially, or just a big, big jar of pasta or something, just to get us by, do you think? Even if it's just a couple of days' worth, or... Yeah, Those no. guys next, uh, next door have got weeks of food. Yep. We'll discuss what amount yep. we can give based on what we've got. Yeah, and if it does... Plenty of oysters on the rock. There is plenty of oysters, pretty boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, mate, that's right. You know, log camp's having a big cry. We've got no food, we're starving. But at the same time, we won't walk our legs up the beach to get an oyster. So, you know, I've got about this much sympathy for them. See you, mate. See you, mate. See you guys. I understand it's a group decision, so have a talk. Thanks, Thanks mate. Thanks, Corey. I thought it was a dumb idea, bad deal. Forget about it. While Top Camp discusses the merits of giving up valuable food to keep their single bracelet players safe from D-Day... I just think we're making it far too easy for Log Camp. Yeah. Corey's headed down the beach to offer the same deal to Chloe, a representative from Vine Camp. Oh, crazy. Why feel you want to have a I quick yarn, yeah. do you? Yeah, sure. Look, um, obviously, it's a dire straight situation I for know. us. I yeah. um, Because we've got home food. What are your thoughts on potentially giving us some food? Will this affect your nomination? 100% you have my word. I think I could possibly have a big group discussion. Yep. I think Chloe was keen to start bartering. She was open to it, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's a team decision. Too easy. All right, thanks for your time, right, mate. Appreciate it. You can't make decisions on your own. You've got to make it as a camp. Chloe's taken Corey's proposal back to her campmates. When I went down to speak to Corey, I actually thought it was going to be about the challenge. It wasn't, and I'm pretty sure you guys will know what it is about, to potentially give some food or do a trade. And with 11 players holding just a single bracelet, Fine Camp could have the most to gain from agreeing to the deal. And honestly, like, I'm not opposed to giving them a cup of flour, but I wouldn't want to be trading it for nominations at all. I don't think that's ethical. Honestly, my heart does break for Log. I wouldn't mind giving them a cup of flour to help them out, but I thought that was a bit rough because it's essentially bribery. If you're not here to play the game and you're here to make mates, then fine, go and give yep. them all your tucker. But yep. if you want to win and have money on your wrist at the end, you've got to be harsh at some yeah. point in the game. There's a boat that goes back to the mainland every night at bloody 7 o'clock with people on it, and. If they're hungry, they can hop on it and leave the game, you know? He might put it all on Vine, though, if we don't give him food. 
if well, could do that there's a risk. Too. Yeah. He's already, I know, I know. Do we want to just put our hands up if we feel inclined to potentially share? So potentially. With propositions now on the table at the two camps with food, Corey returns home to log camp. You! Hey guys, how are we? Welcome home. Good, good. Oh. So you've got some big decisions to make, hey? Massive. And a surprising request from one of his own. So you know what I was thinking? From a camp's perspective, 100,000 is huge. Like, yeah, I, I want to go in the challenge. I asked Corey to put myself in the challenge because I'm keen. I want to go in there, I want to win the money. At least if I go in, I give us a 10% chance. We also needed one person from Log Camp in that challenge to give us the opportunity to try and bring more bracelets back to Log Camp and control the game with the wheel spin. Well, I reckon we should put Jake there. So with nominations imminent, Corey's got a lot on his mind. But a delegation from Top Camp has arrived, hoping to clarify his thinking. Hi, I. Hi. 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 How are we going? Hi. Family meeting? Yeah. Hi. What's in there? Uh, well, we had a little chat to Corey this morning, and um, yeah. uh, we've brought over a little offering. This parcel. Oh, there's Dylan. From us and the rest of Top Camp. Yeah. We can eat you today. Know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a smart decision that we came to the party with the pasta. I knew Corey would look after us if we delivered the food. We have always known that Top Camp and Log Camp, uh, we're all tired, like we're good mates and stuff, and yeah. we're actually happy this, this can happen. Yeah. It's good for you guys to stay in this game. Amazing. No worries. But back at Top Camp, not all of Chelsea's campmates agree. What do you think of the deal, bro? Uh, it's their funeral, really, I think. <laughs> Delivering food to the weakest links now. Jeez, it's a no-brainer from me. We want them to go hungry. We want the seagulls pecking their eyeballs out. If we hear anyone whinging that they're hungry in here, I'm just oh. going to... I'm like... Drop crying. it like it's hot. Why would anyone make that deal? It's dumb. That's the go. Yeah, really good. It was received really, really well. They were... Ecstatic. Tell you Chelsea's playing her own game. We're all discussing what we think about things, but Chelsea will make your mind up for you. We already knew there's a bond between top and long, but it definitely felt like a big cementing of our two camps. She's definitely got a lot to say, but, uh, you know, I just take that with a grain of salt. Attention all players, it's D-Day, my favourite day of the year. Corby, please go to the nominations board and nominate your ten single bracelet players. Here we go, the game is going to be flipped on its absolute backside, you are kidding. Only players with single bracelets are on the board for the D-Day challenge. Six from top camp, 11 from Vine Camp and two from Corby's own Log Camp. Decisions, decisions, eh? Huge decision to make for me personally. The ultimate power. Nine people were potentially going home. Is anyone else still a little bit nervous? I trust, I trust Corey, but everyone, when they get there, you never know what they're going to do. No, I trust Corey 110%. I like yeah. it, I like it. You're making me feel confident. Chelsea thinks she's made a deal with Log Camp. No, we have a plan, right. so let's see how it goes. But let's see what Corey does. You know, this is going to be a good one. This will be interesting. Coming up. Your strategy trying to wipe out another camp? Yes, it is. A challenge that will completely reshape the competition. Players, it's time to surrender your bracelets in a massive 10 player battle. The winner takes all $100,000. But with just one person 
deciding the fate of many. Here comes the push! I don't think I can hold this any longer. Who will rise and who will fall? Is that never a nice feeling to potentially decide someone's fate? It's D-Day on Million Dollar Island. Decisions, decisions, eh? Here we go. On the board are only players who hold a single bracelet. It's now up to Corey to choose 10 to compete in a winner-takes-all challenge. The ultimate power. Nine people are potentially going home. Friendship is fortune in this game. Let's go. I'm not only hoping Top Camp would be safe. I know it. Pretty sweet alliance happening with Log. I trust Corey 100%. Oh. Yeah, look, it's never a nice feeling to potentially decide someone's fate. But I think I made the best decision for the team. Top Camp came to the party and gave us food. They've, they've gone above and beyond to help us, so I'm not going to nominate any of Top Camp. And with Vine Camp, they're, they're, not, they're not sharing. So I need to nominate Vine. One down, and with nine nominations left, Corey has ten Vine players left to choose from. Jack, he's a member of the Vine camp. He's got a bit of fire in the belly and potentially a little bit of a challenge threat. We've got Jonty. I'm very conflicted. He's a good bloke. He's, he's a legend. We all like Jonty, but he's a part of Vine and I see him as a physical threat as well. Sorry, Johnny. Got young Jason here. He's in my camp, log camp. There's a lot of risk with this nomination because um, he loses and gets out of the game. It'd be an awkward situation, but Jason's asked for this. He, he wants this opportunity. He could potentially come home with $100,000 for our camp. Doc, I'm nominating purely because he's in Vine. Sorry, Doc. I feel bad that I have to make the decision to eradicate a lot of Vine. But if they had given us food, then they probably would have been saved. My nominations are purely based on backing my camp, Camp Log. And we needed food. Oh, the last person. Yasmin. I haven't connected with her as much as the other two girls, Brianna and Chloe. I feel like they're good people and um, I feel like I can trust them. So, unfortunately, I, I'm sorry, Yasmin, but it is Yasmin. <laughs> so, I nominated nine of Vine Camp and one of our guys, Jason. This is a big decision I've made for the camp of myself. And I've got a target on me back now. So, if someone wins from Vine and they get the wheel spin, whew, see you later, Corey. Attention, everyone. The names of today's challenge players have been posted. Please head to the nomination board. Let's go, please bring us some good news. Oh, I love this. Right. Hey, Jason. And Yasmin. I love and this. And Ken and Moya. Wait a minute. It's the whole, it's the whole three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, no way. Oh, wait, so They're wiping us out. Vine Camp could have saved themselves from this mass nomination if they'd simply offered food to Log Camp. Sorry, mate. I don't want you to go, mate, but it's one of those things, mate. I see you as a physical powerhouse, mate. I was quite emotional at the nomination board. I think it's unfair, and I feel quite betrayed by Corey. Give it your all, mate. I want to go. And I hope, I expect, if you win, come after me. I've got two options. I can sit here and complain about my odds and complain about who I'm up against, or I can take a step back, take a deep breath. There is one person in particular I'm doing this for. About three years ago, we lost my grandfather to leukaemia. I would love to put such a large amount of money towards leukaemia research so other families don't have to go through what we did. I want to do him proud. This is my opportunity to prove myself. It's just fueling the fire, and this fire is about to rage. Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I want it. 
God. It was a weird feeling seeing myself on the board, but also a good feeling. Yeah, Jason, bring it home for Lord Cam. You! As Vine Camp's players process the reality of Corby's nomination bombshell... <laughs> Catch in the game, mate. Top Camp's players are grateful they've all been spared. Mate, what goes around comes around. That's right, mate. I'm prepared for it. Let me ask my question. What did you guys do to not get one of you guys? Everything we needed to do. We shared food. We're all safe. Just as I knew it would go down, Corey kept his end of the bargain and he put up all of Vine Camp. It's good. I'm glad that, like, yeah, Corey. We, we've known he's a bloody mm. genuine mm. legend of From a bloke. The I'd be and stoked to see him at the end. He come through with the goods just like we did with the pasta. After getting his wish to compete in the D-Day challenge, Jason's pulled twin brother Jaden aside for a chat. There is a risk that I go home, but that ri big risk come big reward. I feel like we're the only two on the island that has a second chance. If you go home, I'm still here to fight. Growing up, me and my brother have been always together for everything. We haven't left each other's side at all. Yeah, we're basically the same person. Like, we can say... What number are you thinking from, from one to ten? Three, Three two, two, one, five. five. Our parents moved from India in 1996 with nothing in their pockets. They sold all their clothes on their back just to give me, my brother, and my sister a better life in Australia. So a million dollars means to me, my brother, definitely, like, that's it. Our parents are taken care of. That's the end goal for us. As long as our mum and dad are happy as they've given us so much and we'll be able to know that they have a happy retirement now. You reckon I can do it? 100%. 100%. You would think I'd be worried, but I'm actually rearing at this opportunity. I want to make it to the end with my twin brother, and I think I can win. Back at Vine Camp, news of their nine D-Day nominations means emotions are running high. Yeah, at least eight of us are going home today. Uh, yeah, that's all right, Chloe. Oh, Chloe. 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 Corey has literally wiped out Vine Camp with this decision. And honestly, I'm pretty upset about it. He's thrown us all to the dogs. It's not like I don't want to do a challenge, I just don't want to lose a challenge. I would love to have a 100k. Honestly, it would be wicked to win. Whoever ends up winning this is going to have to come back and really make Corey a pay. I think he's... Uh blowing the lid off the game. Well, let's just wipe guys now straight away. Uh, either way, we come back with 100k. I've just got to switch on now. This stage of the game is time to play. I want the money. If I win this challenge today, after that, I want Corey, I want Bredo, I want any of the wristbands. I'm pumped up, I'm on cloud nine, I'm full of energy and I'm ready to go. Attention all players. Please make your way to the arena. Oh. It's time for today's challenge. I know I'm capable of so much more than everyone believes I am. I need to fight for this, because I am not going home yet. Players, D-Day is upon us. Please make your way to the arena where we will bear witness to a day of reckoning for those with a single bracelet. I've got no issue going up against all my campmates. You're on your own, you know. When you're on in the competitive arena, it's you to win and you to lose, that's it. Today's challenge is huge. It's all or nothing. I already have the capability to win. I back my ability. I want to win bracelets. I want to go further in the game. Corby, everyone you've nominated is from Vine Camp, apart from Jason. In fact, there's only four Vine players who aren't in this challenge. The two you spared with single bracelets and the two who are out of the mix because they hold more than one. Your strategy trying to wipe out another camp. 
Yes, it is. Yes. That is a big call. It's massive. And did you strike any deals before making your decision? I was sort of thinking in my head about the food situation in the log camp. We're struggling for food, and I talked with Top Camp, and they decided to uh, give us at least two or three servings of food to keep themselves in the game. So straight away, I just thought, you know what? I'm going to keep them in the game. And the goal was to eradicate vine. Johnsy, you don't look impressed. Oh, mate. Any words for Corey? <laughs> It is what it is, it's a game. I came here to prove myself. I've got a lot to prove, a lot of people to prove it to. This is it, mate. This is where I stand up and show people what I can do. Yeah. Bit of fire in John C. Jaden, you've got your twin brother standing up there, the one person from Rock Camp. How do you feel? I'm confident he can probably win this, but if he loses, I guess I got bragging rights on the better twin. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling about that? It, as he said, bragging rights. If I win this, it will show I'm the superior twin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fight and talk between the twins. Save it for now. Save it for now. Jack, are you ready to go? I'm ready for Aaron. As soon as the news dropped, there was a challenge on. I wanted to get in, and that was just one thing, a challenge we know nothing about. I knew I wanted to be in it. You know what they say, Jack? Fortune favours the brave. So hopefully it'll work for you today. Players, let's get down to business. You know what you need to do? Jason. Log Camp has been my family. I want to win the money, and I want to take the money back to Log Camp. Go on, Sean. <laughs> Yasmin, you know what you need to do? I love my other camp members, but I'm in this to the end, and I know that that means pushing them out, but I want to win this, whatever it takes. David. <laughs> Kenneth. <laughs> Doc. We got this. Johnty, let's go. I'm here to prove myself to everyone who's doubted me in the past. I want to pull off the impossible and conquer D-Day. Kyle. Jack. I'm a competitor by nature, so to me, as soon as you get on the competition floor, it's every man a woman for himself. That's $100,000 in the bowl. 10% chance of winning. Make sure that person is you. Since all of you have been hesitant in this game, I'm going to give you a little push. Here's how the arena challenge will play out. You will each stand on the edge of a very small platform where I will ask you a series of true or false questions about your campmates. Get the question wrong, and you'll be pushed closer to the water's edge. The last player standing wins $100,000 worth of bracelets. So let's see how much you know about each other. Oh, my God. This is going to do my head in. My strategy in the beginning was to lay low and not talk to a lot of people. So I knew I was going to struggle with the questions. Part of my game is the social game. I am so good at making friends with people. I've got this. This is it. As I've always said, friendships can lead to fortunes. So I'm just going to cross my fingers and dig those toes in. Take your position. Get used to the feeling with your feet and make sure you've got a good grip. The winner takes all $100,000. Ignore those cramps. See it. Focus. Stay disciplined. Straight away, I can feel the fire in my feet. They're burning immediately. But I know I can win the challenge, and I'm not going to be going home. At the end of the day, I want to prove that I'm better than everyone. Listen to your first question. Brett, who is the richest player on the island, is a father of three. True or false? Who knows Brett well? Reveal your answers now. Almost 
The answer is false. Brett is a father of one. Six of you got it wrong. Doc, John T, Jason, Kenneth, Moya, and Jack. Here comes the push. <laughs> People are looking very uncomfortable. Those nudges were big. It keeps going. Yeah. Oh my God. When you get that push in the back, yeah. It is just leaning on you like no one's business. And I'm trying to do everything I can to stand up to it, you know? But nothing was relieving the pain in your feet. Jason, barely hanging in there. I'm trying everything in my power not to fall over. You are shaking like mad there. You can do it, Ooh. Jay. The cramps are starting to kick in. Oh. This is the most pain I've ever felt in my life. Keep those elbows off the backrest. It's not more than 60 seconds in until people just dropped off the perch and straight into the drink. <laughs> no, if you're going to go, you're going to go. Oh! And I could not be happier about it. Look, you are out of this challenge. Oh, yeah. oh, boy. Use your toes, grip. I know it hurts. Keep gripping. Keep gripping. <laughs> Boya is now out of the challenge. That's two down. Eight of you remain standing and in the running for $100,000 worth of bracelets. Get ready for your next question. Georgie from Log Camp was born in America and moved to Australia seven years ago. True or false? I can now tell you the answer is false. Georgie was actually born in Australia but spent 26 years in America. Jason and Yasmin, you both got it wrong, so get ready for a push. When that nudge hits you in the back, oh, it's not good. If your foot placement is even slightly off, that platform is slippery, you're gone. I am desperate to stay in the game, and I'm just thinking, please, for the love of God, stay strong. Yasmin, how does it feel? Really painful. But you got this, right? Oh, Jason has hit the water. It's shattering to see my twin brother Jason go out early. I don't want him to go home. There goes Log Camp's chance of winning this challenge. I'm not going to leave this podium up here until my body shuts down. Every single person that drops from here on out is closer to me getting to the finish line. I could care less how bad they feel. I just want to see them all fall over. So there's seven of you left. Fall into the water and you're out. Who will be the last player standing to win $100,000 worth of bracelets? Jack, I like that fighting spirit. How competitive are you? Super competitive, Ant. I can tell by your toes. I'll worry about them tomorrow when they drop off. OK, next question. Carla from Log Camp is not only an expedition leader, she is also a commercial airline pilot. True or false? I've got a very good memory. I've got good attention to detail. But this question is an absolute 50-50 guess. Reveal your answers now. Oh. 
I can tell you that the answer is false. <laughs> Carla can fly, but she only holds a helicopter licence. I'm kicking myself. If I get one more wrong, I'm going in that water. All of you were incorrect. So everyone gets a push. You better hang on for dear life. Oh my God. I'm feeling it the most in my toes and it is excruciating. But I really wanted to beat Jack, especially because we've had a few moments in the past and I just wanted to outlast him. I can see the pain is taking a serious toll now. Let's get on to the next question. Oh, David's had enough. And Kyle. David and Kyle. Anyone else? And Shannon is out of the game. Kenneth is off the floor. A nice face plant there. Jack, Yasmin and John T, it's now down to you to battle it out for $100,000 worth of bracelets. Right now, the joints in your knees, ankles and feet feel like they're being crushed under the immense pressure bearing down on them. Soon, your entire body will fail. But the question is, how long can you endure the torment? John T, bit of pain? I'm confident, mate. And I'm remembering why I'm here, who I'm here for. And who's that? I'm playing for a lot of people, but most importantly, my grandfather. He means a lot, mate. We lost him three years ago. He's really pushing me to be here. I know he's up there smiling down at me. I want to do him proud. I've got Yasmin up there, and she is hanging on to the edge now. And Jack is really, really struggling. I need to stay focused, get nothing wrong, and walk out with a $100,000 bracelet. Got this in the bag. Key here is to block out the pain. At this stage, it's a real game of focus, discipline and endurance. Next question. When not working as a PE teacher, Chelsea is the captain of a grand final winning professional AFL side. True or false? I had no idea what the answer to that question was. And I don't know if I can hang on any longer. I'm just praying that both John and Yaz got it wrong. Reveal your answers now. The answer is false. It was Chelsea's soccer team that recently won the grand final. Jack, you are incorrect. Let's give him a push. You look really comfortable there. How are you feeling? Terrible, Ant. I'm a pig-headed old bugger and I refuse to break. Oh. You know, you put your balls on the line, you come out and you get rewarded at the end. Jasmine, you've got a good position there. Do you think you can hold it? I can't even feel my arms anymore. They've gone completely numb. All I'm thinking is how much my body hurt, but even though I was in pain, I wasn't letting go before Jack. I will oh. leave you be to focus. Jack, what part of the... Oh. 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 Jack couldn't hold it. He's out of the game. The final push out there was what pushed me off. I couldn't hang on any longer. I'm absolutely gutted. And it's down to the final two. John C versus Yasmin. Well, of course, the best was safe for last. I knew Yasmin was going to be my biggest competition coming into this. I'm looking over at her and she has arched her back over the barrel. I don't know how she's doing that, but she looks set. This is neck and neck, or toe and toe. Who wants it the most? 
for one hundred thousand dollars. Are you ready for your next question? True or false? Corey believes a clairvoyant predicted his appearance on Million Dollar Island. For one hundred thousand dollars, I'm praying, I'm hoping, I'm wishing, I'm, everything's crossed. This is it. Reveal your answers now. Split decision on this. I can indeed tell you. That Jonty is correct. Yeah, I heard Corey. Let's go. <laughs> Yasmin, if you hold on to this, you deserve to win this challenge. I'm desperately trying to hang in there, but everything's hurting. My toes are excruciating. I don't think I can hold this any longer. Don't hold on! <laughs> John T is the winner! You now have $100,000 worth of bracelets and are well and truly in the game. I cannot believe it. I've never had any better feeling in my life. I came here to prove people wrong. I came here to prove people how strong I am, how capable I am. I've done it. Coming up. Welcome back to the arena. A survival challenge that's more than meets the eye. I'm definitely not ready to go home. And the will places its power into unexpected hands. God knows what she's going to do. This was the biggest individual challenge on the island so far. It was D-Day, and today belongs to you. You have won $100,000 worth of bracelets. Well done. Step forward and collect them. What I'm going to do, I'm going to keep those, and I've got another gold bracelet for you. Matches the shirt. Tell me how this feels. You are now worth... $100,000, and you are safe from tonight's elimination. I'm here to prove people wrong. I've done just that. I'm stoked, mate. It feels like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders, and a huge weight was also put on my wrist. Congratulations. Go and join your camp. Well done. Thanks, Appreciate it. Now, I'm worried I might be a target. I'm back. This is D-Day. 10 players entered the arena but only one prevailed. As for the rest of you, you went the wrong way, from one bracelet to zero. And now you're in danger of elimination in tonight's ceremony. Yasmin, you were so close, but yet so far, how do you feel? I really, really wanted to be through to the end, so... But we all, we all do. We move on, we keep fighting. We dig deep. I like that fighting spirit, Jack. How do you feel? I'm broken. What's going through your head? I had me missus, Cass, and me niece and nephew in my head the whole time out there. But I knew they'd already be proud. Jack, it's not over yet. There's still a chance in today's survival challenge. But know this, because it's D-Day, I can tell you that only the winner will be spared from elimination, and eight of you will be going home. Players, let D-Day be a warning to you all. Get your head in the game, get after it, and I will see you tonight. I felt so disappointed. I was the only person from Log Camp that had a hope of bringing 100,000 to our camp, and I've let him down. Just 
wanted to apologise for that on my behalf if I let any of you guys down. Yeah. I'm happy with what I've achieved in this game and... It's not over yet. Yeah, it's not no, over no. yet. It's not over yet. I'm going to give it my all in the Survivor Challenge and see where we go from there. Good that's luck. it. Good yeah. on you, buddy. Thank Good you. On. Yeah, Thank you. Good on you, mate. Yeah, that's it. Good job. Thank you. At this point of the game, we have created some really beautiful friendships. Yeah, I know. That's it. <laughs> The beautiful thing about our group is sharing that love and compassion and caring between all of us. Family yeah, dinners. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so while we're serving oh this up, God. maybe we should have a chat about those people who are going into the Survivor Challenge. Yeah. If we have to work together, obviously, we're a bit of a family here. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do what we can, right? Yeah, and we'll just see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I came on Million Dollar Island because I would like to help my family out. I've got five children and six grandchildren, and it's really hard to get started with houses and, you know, financial, so I'd like to really help them out. Look, I still want to be here. The money would be amazing, like it would be for everyone else, and everyone else has a great reason to be here and this camp. I love you all and I've just had such a great experience. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just got too many wrong. Mm. I took a shot today and I missed it. Well, that's it, and they've still got a second chance. So. Yeah. You know, you're trying to just suck it up, regroup. Yeah. Yeah. Get your head back in the game. I'm not the survival one. I'm yeah. not packing me bag. No. That's the game. I'm not packing me bag. Positive, positive attitude. Say, positive, positive attitude. Positive. When you haven't got family around pumping you up, you need someone close by. And Tones feels like my family. He gives me advice like he's my old man. We talk together like we're brothers. Tones saw that I was broken. He saw I was down. And he doesn't want me to leave, and I'd never want him to leave the island. Yeah. I come out here and didn't think I'd meet someone I'd you know, let alone get on with. Yeah, yeah. Consider me best mate. Or, for Christ's sake, consider me old man. Oh, know? Jesus, like, yeah. uh, like, I just respect you that yeah, much yeah. as a bloke. And that's... Uh, I wanted to make you proud. Oh, you've done everything you could, mate. Yeah. And that's, a, that's all you can ever ask from anyone. So yeah. I, I'm as proud as, mate. Jack's a, a fantastic fellow, fantastic human. He's gutted. It could be his final call. But, mate, I know he's a fighter. And after the talks we've had, he's doing it for his family. Like, personally, our own family's been through a lot with the drought. Um, and our whole communities had not had bushfires, floods. We just got to keep all keep pushing through and have each other's back. Be me last me tears, I promise. <laughs> Trying to regroup. No more, Trying to yeah. regroup. Um, Find the next challenge. Yeah, exactly. Right. Face it. Yeah. And that's all we got to do. I'm going to get over it and get on to the next. Yeah. 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 Tones means a great deal to me out here, you know. So he gave me a bit of a boot up the arse and, no, I don't want to let him down. I don't want him thinking less of me. I don't want him thinking I'm a quitter. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to rip in and I know I'm not going to lose this challenge. on D-Day, make your way back to the arena for the survival challenge, where there will be one winner and eight players will leave the island immediately. I'm chomping at the bit. I'm ready for anything. You've got to get in that competitive mode, and I'm hoping I'm the only one out there that actually wants to do this thing. I don't know what the future holds, it's uncertain for me, but I'm ready to give it my all to win the challenge. After the absolutely epic challenge, I'm still trying to get the feeling back into my arms and my feet, but I'm definitely not ready to go home. I know I want it. I definitely want it. Players, welcome back to the arena. Long time no see. It's still a day of reckoning for the single bracelet players. Welcome to the survival challenge, where I will be testing your survival skills whilst you fight for your survival in this game. Although nine of you lost your bracelets in the arena challenge, one of you has the chance to win it back. 
Jack, you are upset after today's arena challenge. Have you given up? Or are you going to fight for your place in this game tonight? Nah, I'm fighting, mate. I was rattled at the time. I caught up with Tones when we got back to camp, and um, I couldn't give any more out there, you know? You've got a chance now to win back your bracelet. Are you in the game? I'm in the game. So, Tony, what do you think of your mate Jack? There's a bond there that, yeah, it's unspoken. So, yeah, he's a good man. He's hardly left me side. We've been fishing, doing everything 24-7. So, yeah, it's, he's a good man to have. So I'd like to have him back. Jaden, how do you feel about your brother standing there right now at risk of elimination? It's tough to see because we both came in together. And, like, I would like to see him at the end with me, but time will tell. The time for talk is done. Let's get down to business. Now, I know many of you are painfully hungry. Behind me is a large crate full of food and supplies. Whoever wins this challenge will not only reclaim their bracelet, but also take this food back to their camp. Oh. We're starving. Our camp only has one meal left. I think all of Log Camp are relying on me to take this home. We've just been out here getting picked off member by member. But, you know, that tucker box, that is a massive chance for us to get out there and finally get a bit of power and a bit of a bargaining chip that we can use to our advantage. Here's how it will play out. When it comes to survival, memory is a critical skill. You will have one minute to memorise as many items as you can in that supply crate. Then write down as many as you can remember the player with the most correct items wins. I think I will do pretty well. I love winning, hate losing. When you put your mind to it, you can do anything you want. Show us how good you are, Jace. Show us, Jace. Okay, so you have 60 seconds to lock in as many items as you can. And remember, only tonight's winner is safe from elimination. So, three, two, one, let's go. As soon as the box opens up, I'm not thinking about anything but what's in that box. I'm not hearing any crowd noise. I'm not worried about who's moving beside me. We need this. We've got a little bit of tucker left, but it's not going to get us to the end of the game. I'm, like, really strong with memory. I've always been really strong with memory. I'm already thinking I've got this in the bag. I can grab probably 14 off this list and I don't even have to look at it for 60 seconds. 30 seconds left. This isn't just to survive in the game. You could feed your whole camp for weeks with this food. We are so hungry that crate would completely change our game, having a food supply like that. I thought it was actually quite easy. I have a system of remembering. I knew I wasn't going to get everything, but if I got at least 10, I might have a good shot. I have done this sort of thing at scout camps before. I'm just hoping that I'm going to be able to recall enough information that it gets me through. 10 seconds are remaining. Five, four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Players, grab your clipboard and pen. And when I say go, you'll have 90 seconds to write down what you've memorised. Whoever gets the most items correct wins their bracelet back and the rest are going home. Your time starts now. This little old lady, they don't realise that actually I've got an inner strength and an inner determination. I'm just going to go hell for leather. My memory's good, I'm not going to lie. I remembered a lot of the things on that list. I need to win this. This is big for me. 30 seconds left. 
My tactic is visually picturing what was in there beforehand. So I was going left to right, imagining what was there. Three, two, one. Stop writing, pens down. Hold your boards to your chest. Good work, guys. Job fine. I can tell you all that there were 15 different items in the crate, including guava, Ooh. hot cocoa, oh. and marshmallows. Oh. It's time to find out how many of those items you recalled. You will win back your bracelet, your place in the game, and that whole supply crate. Moya, we will start with you. Please turn your board around. Moya, out of the 15 items in the crate, you memorised 11. I actually didn't think I had enough to win the challenge because there's so many smart and clever people that were in that challenge. Kenneth, turn your board around. Kenneth, you recalled correctly 10 of them. Come and join me. You have now been eliminated. Moya, you are still the front runner. Shannon, you're up. Turn your board around. Shannon, out of the 15 items, you correctly recalled nine. Unlucky, you two are going home. When Ant was calling out some names... Doc, come and join me. They hadn't beaten my score. I was really surprised. David, fortunately, that is not enough. I was thinking, maybe this is really close. Carl, that's not enough. Maybe I've got a chance. So I was starting to get a bit excited. Moya is speechless. There are three players yet to reveal their boards. Jack, Yasmin and Jason. Jack, please show us your board. I've just written everything possible I could on that piece of paper. I didn't count them, but I know I've nearly filled the page. I hope it's enough to get me over the line. You're sort of looking at the words, and I'm thinking, is there enough? I need him to come back. He's a good mate, and I hope he can get through. He's got it. He's got it. Jack, of the 15 items, you were called correctly. 13. Oh, Jacko! Woo! Nice, Jacko! Moya, please come and join the others. Oh, Moya. Jack, take your place there. Does it feel good to be in the lead? Feels good to be in the lead at the moment, yeah. A little glimmer of hope. I have. I've got it at the moment. Let's find out. Yasmin, it's your turn. Jack is in the lead. I have seen how much he really wants to be here, but I want to win this, whatever it takes. It's time to reveal your board. Out of 15 items, you recalled 11. Unfortunately, it's not enough. Come and join the others. Now it's down to the two of you. Jack and Jason. Vine and log. I back my memory. I think I have this in the bag. I'm honestly preparing my celebration with my camp in my head. We need this supply box, you know. This could be our only bargain and chip to stay in the game. So I've got every confidence in myself to get over the line here. Who will win back their $10,000 bracelet? And who will take back that magnificent crate to their camp? We've never needed a win more than this one. Jason need to bring home some food because we are out. Jason, please turn your board.
Who will win back their $10,000 bracelets? And who will take that magnificent crate full of food and supplies back to their camp? There are two left in the game, and Jack is the player to beat. Jason, please turn your board. Mate, Jason's off with the fairies most of the time out here, so I'm pretty confident he's got at least four or five of them wrong. There were 15 items in the crate. Jack remembered 13 correctly. Jason, there are 14 on your list. Yeah, we won! But... How many of them are correct? Jason, you correctly recalled... <laughs> 11. Jack, you are the winner of the Survival Challenge! <laughs> yes, Jack! <laughs> it's Tones out here that I want to make proud because he reminds me of family. So it was just unbelievable running there and give that bugger a great big hug. I was just ecstatic for him. and Everything I dreamed that he would pull off, he did. And it was just great to know he's back in camp. Jason, come and join the others. I'm not going to lie, uh, when, when Jason lost, I was, I was devastated for him. We've got no food. We've got nothing, and that supply crate would have saved us. It sucked. Hold on. You know, Vine Camp, we've just been decimated. This box of supplies for us is great. Now we're going to have a decent meal every night, and we've finally got a bit of power and a bit of a bargaining chip that we can use to our advantage. Jack, you have won back your $10,000 bracelet. I'm so honoured to be able to give him his bracelet back. I saw how much this meant to him. Good morning, mate. Good morning, mate. I'm just pumped to be back in the game. Unfortunately for the eight of you, your time on Million Dollar Island is up. As you know, no one can be saved tonight. And you must leave Million Dollar Island for good. Vine camp, they've pretty well been obliterated by the quarry factor here. Team Vine forever! <laughs> Ant should have done this days ago, you know? There's so much driftwood floating in and out on a high tide here. Time to just see it go, you know? You've all just learned that there's zero room for passengers in this game. Now, it's that time of the night. Do we have any quitters? Please raise your hands now. That's good. Very good. Everyone's committed to making it to the bitter end. D-Day changed the game forever. And just like that, two thirds of the players that started this epic game have gone. There are 33 of you left in the arena. You're still in the game, still very much at the forefront of winning your share of $1 million. But always remember, what goes around comes around. Let's spin the wheel. I'm looking at that wheel, I'm blowing from the bleachers, I'm trying to get the thing to land on number 80. The wheel has 
landed on number 16. That's you, Chelsea! <laughs> I was in shock. I was ecstatic. Lucky number 16. Step into the arena! For top camp, that's a win. I just hope she doesn't do something silly like go for the cash, lose it, and then someone yes. else in log camp's got more bracelets than me. God knows what she's going to do. One yes. bracelet, one chance, and you pull oh. it off. Oh, well done. Come and join me, Chelsea. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Chelsea, you've got a night of comfort now. Brilliant. To decide which six players you nominate for the next arena challenge. But you cannot pick Brett because he's the richest person on Million Dollar Island. So will you play yourself or nominate others? It's completely up to you. Of all the people on the island that could have got that wheel spin, Chelsea was the worst one to get it. Chelsea's just a loose cannon and she's going to do what she does and best of luck to her. I'm going to give you a little hint for tomorrow's arena challenge. It will be best suited to players who are good with words. You can now make your way to the other side of the island Good luck and get after it. I knew from the start my time would come. Now I've got control over this game. My strategy is to get out of the one bracelet club, start building up some cash on the wrist. It's my time to shine. Let's go. This news update brought to you by Australia's only 10-year warranty with 10 years cap price servicing. Mitsubishi 1010. You can count on it. Good evening. An urgent search is underway in Victoria for missing man Keith Lees, who police believe is connected to the Sunshine Coast cold case of Megan Rose. A half a million dollar reward was announced today for information about Megan's death in 1997. A crisis meeting is being planned for Caboolture Hospital patients to voice concerns about their treatment. And Queensland's first piece of 2032 Olympic and Paralympic infrastructure is finished at the Ballymore Football Precinct. Partly cloudy tomorrow, a top temperature getting up to 24 degrees. In 7 News tomorrow, the youth crime crisis forcing Queenslanders into drastic action. <coughs> buying trained guard dogs to protect homes and families. Cameras are great, but they're not going to stop somebody. Plus, repairing lungs, restoring energy. The breakthrough treatment beating long COVID. 7 News, Queensland's number one. Because they count on you, count on it. Australia's only 10-year warranty with 10 years cap price servicing. Mitsubishi 1010, you can count on it. Imagine if this was your last meal. We're at Ground Zero officially, like we have got nothing. There's two key players in there who want us to starve to death. I just want to see them all fall over. They're hungry and they're about to crack. There's never been a competition like this. There should be a smidge of human decency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will set the players on a collision course. Dog move, mate. After this, it's war. Emotions are reaching boiling point. And I never met a bloke that worked so hard in his life and got so little. That's the heartbeat of Australia out there, that man. They've got nothing to lose. I'll do anything it takes because I don't want my kids to see that a bully can win. And a million to gain. Oh, no! Let's go, baby! Let's go to war! That's insane! I'm ready. Million Dollar Island. Monday, 7.30 on 7 and 7 Plus.